All right, working through the ECG course. We're in level one, G-rated stuff. And I need to make a change here that I kind of told you a little story a bit ago. I told you to rest up for the AV blocks if that was coming up. But you know what? We decided that AV blocks needed their own thing. And they should be in the conduction unit. And so I changed the order here a little bit, uh, which happens from time to time. Hope I didn't confuse you. We did pace, we did junctional, and now we're going to do ventricular. Then we'll move on. And so AV blocks are still coming, but just not right now. Various types of ventricular rhythms. It couldn't be VTAC. VTAC can be polymorph polymorphic or monomorphic. So monomorphic VTAC, polymorphic VTAC. There's a special subset of polymorphic VTAC called, called Tursad. And then we have runs of VTAC. We have non-sustained VTAC. We have idioventricular rhythms. There's lots of stuff. But you know what? The common thing is that it's got to be wide. The QRS is going to be wider than 120 milliseconds. There can be P waves in VTAC, but they must be dissociated. So there is a pearl. There is something to remember. There is one of those stumpers that you can throw out. I had a class of folks... Uh, a couple of months back that were recertifying on advanced cardiac life support on ACLS. And I threw that out. And these are experienced medics. And I said, hey, can you have P waves in VTAC? And it got real quiet. And then a couple of people said, well, no. And then one guy says, well, yeah, but. So the yeah, but is there can be P waves in VTAC, but the P wave can't be causing the ventricular complex or it's not VTAC because VTAC comes out of the ventricles. So the atria may still be doing something and the P waves are showing up and we can see them, but they are not associated with the QRS. The P wave is not causing the QRS. It is dissociated. So VTAC is going to be 150 or more usually. Sometimes it's too fast to generate a pulse. Kind of mentioned that in a previous lesson. Uh, that will vary, that rate where it won't generate a pulse will vary, but 180 and above is a pretty safe number. And you know how we know that? Because your AED, your little automated shock box, your AED will charge up and tell you to shock VTAC at greater than 180. Because the chances of that VTAC at 180 or more making a pulse are so, so small that it's reasonable just to blast it. So the shock boxes use 180 as their number. Um, and so I just wanted you to know if it's 150, 160, it may be making a pulse. But as that rate increases, the ventricular filling time decreases, and the chance that that, that ventricle is actually pumping anything out it goes down. Now, ACLS speak is wide complex tachycardia. So differentiation between whether the rhythm you're looking at is really VTAC, or it's sinus TAC with a bundle branch block, which made it wide, or it's SVT with a bundle branch block, which made it wide. Mm, those are really, it's a technicality that doesn't matter to Mrs. Smith. So ACLS has gone to this wide complex tachycardia terminology. And when you see a wide complex tachycardia, four out of five times, it's VTAC. It might be something dressed up like VTAC, but usually, four out of five times, 80% of the time or more, it's VTAC. So VTAC may last for a few seconds, and it may convert back to a stable rhythm. It may go worse into V-fib. It can last for several hours. People can walk around with it. Or it can be the initial presenting rhythm in cardiac arrest. The patient VTACs creates no pulse. It degrades into V-fib, and now you're into a code. So the causes of wide complex tachycardia are VTAC, VTAC, VTAC or something else that's aberrantly, abnormally conducted. So sinus tack with a bundle branch block, SVT with a bundle branch block. Maybe it's something with an accessory pathway, so it's a WPW, which is making it wide, and da, 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 da. But let's think about VTAC, VTAC, VTAC. Now there's some rules out there, and you'll run into some really smart guy. Well, he thinks he's smart because he's you know knows stuff, but it's not practical. There are some rules out there for determining if a wide complex tachycardia is really VTAC or not. But they're not sensitive and they're not specific. 
What that means is they are wrong enough and often enough that we can't trust them. Sometimes it'll say, but that's not VTAC, and it turns out to be VTAC. Sometimes it'll say, hey, that's VTAC, and it turns out not to be VTAC. So we don't use the rules. We use a simple rule. And this came from Dr. Matu, stolen fair and square, with all due credit to him. If it is not clearly sinus tack that's aberrantly conducted or has an accessory pathway, if there's not obvious reasons why this is a bundle branch block or a WPW sort of situation, then a Y complex tacky is VTAC. It's VTAC until proven otherwise. And you'll find out as we go through the treatment uh, part of our course, not this course, but the regular paramedic course, the face to face, the scenario based simulation course. When we go through that, we'll practice it and we'll find some stuff that might be SVT with a bundle branch block or it might be VTAC, but you know what? We'll figure out how to treat it and uh, the treatments will work out just fine, so it'll be okay. Here's some examples of VTAC. I was particularly like the 12 lead look because look at the different leads in that 12 lead and look how different that rhythm looks. Look over at V4 and V5 and compare that to V1 and V2. I mean, V1, V2, that's, that's clearly VTAC, everybody would think. And in the rhythm strip at the bottom of that 12 lead, because hospital 12 leads will print off a long strip of the same lead throughout your 10 second 12 lead strip. And you may get to see, you know, different patterns, but look at the different leads and how differently VTAC shows up. So, a wide complex tachycardia is VTAC until proven otherwise. <clears throat> and so going back here, these are all monomorphic VTACs. It's the same shape every time. There's only one shape. Look at this. There's more than one shape. There's several shapes. It's polymorphic VTAC. It's wide. It's ugly. It's fast. It might be something with a bundle branch block. It might be something with an accessory path, but you know what? It's polymorphic. It's multiple shapes. And so a particular version of that is Tersade de Point. Associated with long QTC intervals, treated with magnesium sulfate, it's an unstable rhythm that rapidly degrades into V-fib. And it is, it, the, the term means twisting of the points. And so if you can conceptualize this, this is as though you have taken VTAC and you're looking at it from a fixed place, but someone is spinning it around in front of you, turning it with a joke. We, the, the kind of cutesy thing we talk about is it's VTAC on a rotisserie, if you know what a rotisserie is. If you're grilling up some VTAC, and so that rotisserie turns so that your chicken doesn't get burnt on one side, it gets cooked as it moves all the way around. If you put VTAC on a rotisserie, you get your side. So if you can think of it that way. I don't know, it's frequently confused with VFib with new medic students. We'll work on it, we'll deal with it. It's got its own, own special thing in level two or level three. But for now, know that there's monomorphic VTAC, then there is polymorphic VTAC, and Tersad is one of the polymorphics. Here's some VTACs. Monomorphic on top, polymorphic in the middle, and the specific type of polymorphic Tersad at the bottom. Pretty classic Tersad there. You can almost see it, uh, the amplitude changing as though it's spinning around in front of you. Non-sustained VTAC is, is a situation where you have um, up to 30 seconds of VTAC. Now, a couplet is two PVCs in a row. A triplet is three PVCs in a row. Four PVCs in a row is not a quadruplet. There are no quadruplets in this family. A run of VTAC is four PVCs in a row. If that run lasts up to 30 seconds, we call it non-sustained VTAC. Once it goes over 30 seconds, it's VTAC. So it may be a subtle point, but we're trying to be specific here because it matters for your treatment. It matters for your treatment. You're going to intervene with medicine or Edison. You're going to use electricity or pharmacology on VTAC. But on non-sustained and runs, you're not. You're going to watch carefully you're going to sit on your hands, but you're not going to jump in there. So it matters on the treatment end, and that's why we're uh, talking about the specifics on the terminology here. 
Other ventricular rhythms, you could have an idioventricular rhythm. The rhythm could come from the ventricles. It's a ventricular escape rhythm. The SA node didn't fire, nothing in the junction fired, and finally the backup to the backup to the backup, the third or fourth string quarterback finally gets to play, and you have a ventricular rhythm that is escaping a funeral. Idioventricular rhythm. If that gets accelerated, now you're up in a rate of 40 to 110. And so again, no P waves, but it's wide. You're like, well, hey, that could be junctional with a bundle branch block. Yes, you're right. Very intuitive. So some of this is opinion based, um, but we do lots of reps in class. We work on this rhythm identification stuff. If you see wide and slow with no P waves, you say idioventricular. If you see narrow and slow with no P waves, say junctional. It'd be right more than your own.